Now here is something that you need to know. Something that happens all over the country and whenever it happens, it makes us wonder that amid all this conversation about empowerment, about different communities being politically empowered, how precious little is changing on the ground. We are talking about a Bihar horror where a woman from the scheduled caste community was stripped, was assaulted over 1500 rupees. 1500 rupees. The cops say that the woman's husband took loan from the village strongman and because uh, the strongman felt that the money has to be paid, he ended up doing this. But the couple claims to have repaid the full loan but was still asked for additional interest that you have paid the 1500 rupees but what about the interest and that is why all of this happened. When refused, the money lender and his associates, they attacked the woman, the money lender, his son and aides then allegedly stripped and assaulted the woman and then the very disturbing claim, the woman says that the accused son urinated in my mouth. Let's take a look at this report. Forty-eight hours after being beaten, stripped naked and humiliated by a village strongman and his accomplices over a loan of just 1500 rupees, 30 kilometers outside Bihar's capital Patna, this woman from a scheduled caste, part of the state's Mahadalit community, is recovering at a rural hospital. In her complaint to the police, the woman has said her husband had refused to pay additional interest on the 1500 rupee loan taken from the village strongman. The woman has said that on Saturday night, accused Pramod Singh, his son and their aides first brutally assaulted her, then stripped her naked and even urinated on her face. <laughs> Forty-eight hours after the incident, the local police have not managed to arrest the two men accused, the strongman and his son. But they have been quick to claim that while the woman was indeed assaulted, the other allegations of stripping and urination are untrue. But in this case, the Bihar police appear to be making sweeping statements even before the accused have been arrested. With Manish Kumar and Habib Ali, Bureau Report, NDTV. Why does this happen to communities that are struggling already, financially, socially? This is not the first incident. If you recall a few months ago, a similar atrocity happened on a tribal man who was urinated on in Madhya Pradesh. You can see what a disturbing picture this was. The accused here was arrested. And then, of course, because Madhya Pradesh is going to polls, you had uh, uh, lots of political posturing, which involved the chief minister meeting the tribal man, washing his feet, having breakfast with him. But different state, same story. I mean, in the case of Madhya Pradesh, you had the Congress party infuriated and angry that why in a BJP-ruled state, atrocities are taking place against scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Now what happens? What will they say in the case of Bihar? Let's just hope that justice is delivered. This is going to be a very short discussion right here on the show. Uh, assaulted, stripped and urinated on for 1500 rupees. This is the latest Bihar horror. Professor Badri Narayan, he's a Dalit rights activist and also a professor at the Govind Ballabh Pant Social Science Institute. Thank you very much, Professor Narayan. I mean, 
we have seen atrocities and reports on these uh, atrocities, Professor Narayan, for a very, very long time. Can you hear me, Professor Badri Narayan? Yes. Uh, yeah. Are you? Are you uh, no, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I can hear you. My my question to you is, Professor Narayan, that we have seen these atrocities continuously happening against members of the SC and ST community. But unfortunately, what happens is it gets reduced to a political war. We are looking for a political solution to this. So when it will happen in Madhya Pradesh, the Congress will be up in arms. When it happens in Bihar, the BJP will be up in arms. So do you think that this political solution finding uh, is something which is not really not working, clearly not working? Yes, Sankirti, you are very right. Actually, this is not uh, also a political solution. It's just a making a political mobilization on various issues. You, know? uh, you see, this is the Bihar case where the state, the state is being ruled by the party who claims for a social justice. And this is the state of social justice uh, laid govern, uh, governance. But there are this kind of things ha happening. So it's a very cruel and inhuman act. And I think everyone should take responsibility uh, about this kind of act in the society, a state and public both. And you know, the, the state uh, has a greater role in it. Uh, it's just a moral commitment of the state to provide protection of this kind of uh, community who are vulnerable. And you know, Sanketi, they are most marginal community. They don't have a vote in a big number. Uh, so they are invisible community. But Another question related with it that uh, the state is not uh, can't be present everywhere. So one can't expect that everywhere police will go and stop the things. When the things happen, they will take uh, action against that. So uh, we do need to uh, to uh, orient and create a consciousness among the, the dominant section and also the marginals. They should not go to the to the take the individual loans because now you have microfinance. You have Jandan uh, things, government is claiming so many loan schemes. So I think we should not go in the trap of this Chakravarti Vyaj kind of thing about which Premchand wrote during colonial time. This is Mahajani Sabhyata. So uh, in, that, in that, the money, uh, the claim, the, the Sudkhor claims for a bigger, bigger, bigger money of the six, a small 1500 rupees. So that's, uh, and government should also try to control on it, this kind of uh, Chakravarti Vyaj kind of thing. Uh, make illegal in the society. Yes, uh, I'm so going to come to this uh, this this model of providing uh, loan, very small amounts, extremely high interest uh, in just a short moment. But Professor Badri Narayan, you see, uh, for many people from these marginalized communities, you have had political representation from these communities as well. We have had leaders, political leaders, who make certain strong noises and uh, they make a very strong pitch and a voice for their community. And yet, all those who are doing their politics in their name don't seem to be making much difference. For instance, take a look at Bihar. This is a state from where there is this massive surge and push for a caste census, for social justice, economic justice. And yet, this incident happens in that very same Bihar. Yes, uh, Shanket, you are very right. Actually, uh, this is a kind of uh, what we call aina for them. You know, they should look their face of social justice in that kind of final uh, glass. And you know, uh, what I call th that this is the misplaced voices. No, uh, this is the, they claim that they are the voice of vulnerable, but in, in fact, they are not the voice of vulnerable. They are using those voices for their political uh, political uh, use. And, and, uh, and, and they are not in that way really committed to bring social justice at the grassroots level. Social justice can't come only with the caste census, with the reservation, but you have to change the society, the entire society. And also you have to make yourself human. Social justice is, is more about making yourself human and uh, human to others also. So one can, uh, everyone can, can tolerate each other. Then the social justice can emerge in the society. So the, the definition of the social, social justice, which emerged after uh, independence within the representative uh, politics, in the politics of representation, in, in, the, in, in one way, is not uh, provide, able to provide social justice at the grassroots level. It's just a misplaced voice. It's, it's a halla gulla for social justice, over visibility of the social justice. But at the, at the grassroots, it's not deepening down, not, trickle, uh, not creating trickle down effect. And you know this community, this Mahadalit. In Bihar, there are two dominant community among Dalits, Pasban and Jamas. So people can listen to them because they have a vote. 
but these smaller community they don't have much vote as i said they are invisible community so they they don't have their own community leaders their voices are being represented by represented by the party led by uh, the dominant community of the obcs the party politics led by the dominant community of the obcs and and uh, so uh, in that way dalit voice are very weaker in bihar right All right Professor Badri Narayan thank you very much for your time thank you for joining us and explaining to us in great detail uh, this is an extremely complex subject uh, and uh, one does feel the need of uh, not reducing it to a political slugfest because you know it's really not much uh, it really does not make much difference if there is a state which is opposition ruled or the uh, ruling party ruled it's it's much the same when it comes to the marginalized community in this country the scheduled castes as well as the scheduled tribes thank you very much uh, professor badri narayan stopping for a short break at this moment news and updates continue on the other side